What happened uh, on 25th uh, of last month is unprecedented in this country. Young people go to demonstrate peacefully, Mr. Speaker, but the moment there are peaceful demonstrations and the police think that they should be dispersed, then under the Public Order Act and this regulation they are under, which are actually 20 years old, the last ones were done by uh, former uh, Attorney General Amos Wako, uh, other consequent ministers did not. But even with those old regulations, and even with the Public Order Act and the Penal Court, there has to be a proclamation loud and clear in a speaker by escorting police uh, of, of a level of an Inspector General that the, the peaceful demonstrations have turned rioters and therefore people must disperse. After 15 minutes, that proclamation order is supposed to be repeated. And then now, whoever doesn't disperse, Mr. Speaker, then action can be taken. What I expected the police to do is just guard businesses and let the demonstrators do their thing. Uh, and I believe no one would have died. Unfortunately, we have lost 41 people and quite a number of people are in hospitals. In Makwed, Mr. Speaker, uh, we are buried four people. We buried one last Saturday and another one is being buried today. There is a funeral on next Friday of a young man who was shot actually by an OCS. And on Saturday, there is another one. We have people who are still missing and are not known where they are. So my condolences to the families who have lost their dear ones and also uh, wishing quick recovery to those in the hospital with all manner of injuries, from head injuries to bullet wounds, Mr. Speaker. I really want to say that uh, um, although the President has promised to bury the deceased, up to now we buried Rex last Friday in Machakos, a young man who was going to work but because he happened to have been in Rastafaris and happened to have passed near the crowds, a police officer decided to shoot him. And after shooting him, when the young people cried that he could get help and should be taken to hospital and even wanted to help them with his, their doctors, the policeman who is very well known and has not been charged so far, Mr. Speaker, said let the young man die. So they watched him bleed to death, yet he had just uh, injuries at the leg, which would have been... Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, salvaged. But therefore, so there is no conversation yet. There is no reprieve. There is no one who has been taken to court. Uh, and there is no one who has been sacked or any action taken against that particular. So I'm sure the agencies are watching, and this is one of the issues they really want to deal with as time goes by. Mr. Speaker, the cause of this was the finance bill. And the finance bill, you know, public persuasion took place. And I remember at KICC, Kenyans really, really uh, pleaded with the state and with the parliament. But unfortunately, with the finance bill, in fact, long time ago, during the days of Moi, the minister for finance of the Reedy budget, the next day you will hear price list given for beer and for this and that. That doesn't happen today, exactly. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, you, you, the, the finance bill... Uh, uh, is designed at Treasury with the experts, you know, some from international organizations which fund us, then goes to Cabinet, then comes to the House, the House goes to do public participation. So the input of the people, unfortunately, very little was adapted, and very little has been adapted over the years. Uh, and uh, the, the, the same bill now came to the House, and the usual lobby took place, and members of Parliament, the majority voted yes, and irritated the young people because they did not imagine the hardships life will face. Mr. Speaker, I have engaged some of these people who are in these uh, demonstrations. And most of them, uh, Mr. Speaker, are graduates. They come from poor families. Even as graduates, they have tried to join the army. They have been asked for bribes. Police, the same. Um, any of uh, KWS. And some of them, Mr. Speaker, some of the stories have received from a constituent from McQueney, they have even sold land to raise the bribe of 300,000. After you pay the bribe, you cannot see the people you pay the bribe, and your child is not taken either to the army, police, or forest, or uh, KWS. And therefore, you end up with a very depressed young person with all the talents, surrounded by poverty, unable to fight poverty, and watching now the cost of living rising. And they have told me, Mr. Speaker, they rather die doing something. They rather die visiting us here 
they rather die visiting the house on the hill, they rather die visiting uh, the judiciary, although they think I've let them down. And that's a very difficult position to correct, and quite a number, a majority of them, quite a number, have that idea that they rather die doing something than just commit suicide or do something else. So that level of depression, Mr. Speaker, has been compounded by when they saw the church support politics in an unfair manner, and uh, also uh, they've seen the wasteful lifestyles of some of us in government, uh, some of us who already are doing many things. And it's also very expensive to move government uh, from one place to another, even when they are doing uh, important things. A, a good one example is a recent visit to the U.S., Mr. Speaker. Really, some of the people went to the U.S., even if there, it was a paid-up trip by a benevolent person, I'm sure they had to, the governors had to spend their own monies for the days they spent there, even some extended. There were very many idolers in that trip, and even one of the very frustrating things to many young people here is the issue of disability, which has been talked to by the wonderful senator. Uh, and I participated in the 1998 bombing where a lot of people became disabled. And we summoned the body dealing with disability here, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, the stories they gave were horrifying. We asked them why they're not accommodated, even these ones who were bombed. Uh, and uh, the, the, you, you know, truly, government has failed people in that regard. Most of these children were born, uh, were either a year old or were born after. And the ones who were a year old or so, quite a number of them, including the driver of Mr. Kamodo, had a one year old and a three year old. That one year old uh, of 1997, who is now a Gen Z, uh, never saw the father ever be compensated, who woke up to go to work, but never came back having been bombed and having died in the bomb. A lot of the people were just transiting. Every single county in this country was affected. And all these people have gone to court. People have been in hospital. They have been frustrated over the years. So yet, when this trip was done for the U.S., the people we sent from the committee or the people we sent from this house and any other government person we against, in fact, we against the minister in charge of foreign affairs. Uh, the embassy in Washington was very frustrating on this particular matter when we went to Washington. And uh, many other government departments have been. So what do you expect people from who have relatives they have been taking care of and have seen poverty and suffering all the years and nobody listens, what do you expect them to do? So it goes on, and then all they can see is people, uh, lifestyles which are extravagant on leaders, instead of every leader cutting costs and getting to help the people. When you come to this particular finance bill, although the, the Speaker for National Assembly has promised that it is going to be dealt with later, and although something very unusual has happened, the President, after lobbying for the passing of the bill, decided not to sign it, but sent it back to be deleted clause by clause. He really threw the members of National Assembly under the bus. It is like somebody was vomited, be told to take back their vomit. We remained here as the Senate. They ran away. They don't want to come back, for there are no proper facilities to deal with the whole two houses right now. But today then, if you are to follow the, uh, you know, uh, uh, an act of parliament uh, and under Article 115, which has not yet been interpreted by the courts, and there was contestation from Honorable Otiende, who wanted it repealed instead of uh, be deleted. Mr. Speaker, then that law, 14 days have lapsed, could become law today. What is happening is that by the fear of Gen Z's, no one can announce it has become law, no one can implement it. But I hope when Parliament comes to delete it, then at some point, uh, the National Assembly must still come up with another finance bill. But the real legal act is to repeal, uh, is not to do any other thing. Mr. Speaker, so that others could also co co uh, contribute, uh, there, is a role, there is still high cost of living. The finance bill which was proposed did not help either. I have seen the Minister for Roads insisting on increasing fuel levies and trying to do public participation, which is cosmetic. Uh, this will still in increase the cost of living. Uh, some of the things the Gen Z contested have now been enacted in the region, and we are part of uh, the deals of the region. We have conventions in East Africa, and therefore some of these costs will still come up to us. 
when it comes to dealing with justice, uh, uh, you, you have heard of the, the role of ODPP. It has been very controversial, ESCC, fighting of corruption. We know the null prosecutors, which have been entered when there is sufficient evidence and they are willing prosecutors to prosecute. But a, a, a political deal is arrived at and something uh, happens and somebody who is known to have looted from the, government, from the people's coffers goes scot free and goes on even to join politics and uh, continue messing it up, Mr. Speaker. There has been seen uh, impunity, uh, incompetence in cabinet. We have the chief laws here. Uh, the regulations, luckily, have been uh, annulled by this House because it has stood with the people, Mr. Speaker, and it is the next uh, motion after this. We have seen extrajudicial abductions in Makwene. One has happened this weekend. A nominated councillor, uh, MCA, uh, was abducted on Saturday, taken round in circles, kept in Comunicado. When we made noise yesterday, he's, he was dropped in Makindo town, very sick. And the abductors were asking him about an incident where there was a problem at the funeral of an, of an MCA with a local member of parliament who had voted yes, causing a scuffle in the funeral. And these people who tortured this MCA were asking him why, what, why he had brought problems. Yet, it is the MP himself who caused the problems and is the one who started uh, attacks on the MCA. But that is extrajudicial. If you have committed an offence, you have to be arrested, statements written, and charged in 24 hours. Uh, and therefore, uh, these abductions, some of the kids of Gen Z have been abducted from the demonstrations, have been found dead, uh, one in a quarry. We hope the others are safe, and if they are safe, the government should release them. The President promised that there are no people going to be found in River Yala. I hope after this incident, those who have been kidnapped will not be you know, found in the Rivayala, uh, and we've had, uh, you know, the issue of, uh, so that I may go faster, Mr. Speaker, uh, let me conclude with the issue of pensions. When people retire in this country, Mr. Speaker, and these Gen Cs have their parents who have retired, their pension never comes easy. If it is a teacher, if it is a former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, their money just disappear. And these people are tortured, they have reached 60, they are able to begin a business, they are waiting for their money, and their money has failed to come. Mr. Speaker, all these frustrating situations in the country must change. We hope IBC is going to be put into place quickly. We hope uh, a lot of Gen Zs are now raising signatures for, national, for members of National Assembly are incompetent from August this year. I am very sure most of them will be removed uh, because of what they have been doing to the people and quite a number of by-elections will ensue. So the Gen C continue with the hashtag, Ruto must go. Something must be done in this country, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that the Gen Cs are satisfied and all Kenyans are happy. We are very hardworking. Nation, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support. Senator Karen Nyam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to start by giving my respects to the young soul 